Hi, this is LP, and you're listening to Sound Sessions on WGN Radio. Look at those little tiny notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I do that? Yeah. So uh, no one can read them. Oh, oh the, the person that you're interviewing? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Crafty. Thanks again for joining Thank us you. here today. Um, this is Michael with Sound Sessions here on WGN. We're speaking with the artist LP, who's here playing a sold-out show at Chicago's Metro. Yeah. So how does that Ooh. feel? Because I, I'm sure that there were times when you were playing small venues. How was your perspective? No. <laughs> no, just straight to the top. I don't top. know what you're talking about. <laughs> so how has your perspective changed when you're playing these <laughs> these big venues and selling them out now? Um, it's really cool, you know. I mean, I, I have like. My my career as of now, like you know, in the last years, a couple of years, has been so varied. Mm-hmm. Like you know, here in Europe and everything. So I'm kind of like going in and out of like different sized um, situations all the time. Mm-hmm. But it feels amazing. It's like really nice to. Uh, I think you know. Uh, the whole journey thing that like when people say it's the journey and like I used to hate that I used to want to like just like strangle someone when I heard that. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's I think. Um, in life, as well as business perspective, is pretty much everything. You right. Know? Yeah. yeah. I, I feel it's invaluable, in my opinion. Learning these life lessons, right? Mm. And learning how to kind of just deal with uh, the trials and tribulations and knowing mm. that, that you have to put as much work in. It's kind of like what Paul McCartney says, you only give what you get. <laughs> there you go. Or you get what you yeah, give. Yeah, and I, it's nice to uh, um, to watch people, you know, it grow over time and, and, uh, and just like... The way different songs connect to people mm-hmm. is cool. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about your songwriting process. Uh-huh. So that's something that, going through uh, the the album Lost on You, that I, I was really enjoying is hearing how, you know, you kind of do a little tongue in cheek every once in a while. It's a it's a really cool sound. I've heard that you've been compared to Johnny Cash and all these great <laughs> Sweet. things. When you're writing these songs, what comes first for you though? Is it that melody that you're you're playing on your guitar, or is there certain words or songs? It that depends. You, write? you know, I sit around and like you know like mess around with chords all the time, mm-hmm. and uh, I feel like uh, like inspirations all the time. I'm always like recording and, and collecting, you know, uh, snippets of things and mm-hmm. titles and concepts and you know, and. Uh, and then sometimes I just roll into the studio and, and just we just start from scratch, you know. Um, but I usually like to have a, a little bank of like different uh, bits and bobs, as I say. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I think it's like uh, it kind of gets very visceral for me um, when the when the melody comes into play and and, uh, and that's where like and uh, my favorite way to write a song is usually when I have like a, a title or a concept and then I and then I start like, you know uh, creating the music. Uh, with someone usually um, I like to collaborate mostly I'm, I'm kind of like one of those um, if a tree falls in the forest kind of like like if, if I don't see someone like going reacting going yes yeah, yeah. I'm like eh that might not be good <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoy like the collaboration process mm-hmm. like that but um, so we usually start like that and then I start to get like uh, there's like an emotional kind of like a lot of times like the first or second pass of like um, a a uh, vocal melody will be like the one you know it's just like my my initial thing that comes out seems to be the one that like is my my heart talking you know mm-hmm. I, oh man that's, that's deep <laughs> wild that's so deep nice. uh when you how about this when you, when you're going through this tour what's your daily routine look like have you changed it up at all what no, uh, yes and no i mean you know i i uh i'm a little luckier now because i always have like a day room or like you know even like uh the bus or you know the dressing room where i can uh I usually I steam my voice. I do some yoga. I do mm-hmm. my warm ups. You know, cool. yoga helps me a lot to uh, just get my whole like physicality ready. You know. Yeah. How long have you been practicing yoga for? Like eleven years. Nice. Yeah, I love it. It's you- like a. It, it's probably why I'm standing here right now because <laughs> I just really it just really helped uh, me in so many ways. You know, and it it, it it's kind of like the microwave of exercise that like kind of strengthens you from the inside out and as a singer I mean you know your body is your instrument so it's kind of for me pretty vital thing that's that's great uh, so you said mentioned you steam your voice what does that mean I, I use a uh, like a Vix personal steamer okay um, it's like it just looks like like this thing that goes over and it's like uh, when you're traveling and it's when it's cold like when I fly a lot um, like I'll do like like fly dates every day for like 
10 days in a row, like mm-hmm. I'm going to do when I go to Russia next uh, <laughs> part of the tour. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, like flying a lot really dries you out. So the steam, I steam like 15 minutes before my show and after my show, and it keeps me like agile. Yeah. And yeah. it's still hard. You, you know? probably need that power to, to whistle that much too. I mean, the whistling, you know, like yesterday on stage, I think I did well yesterday in uh, Kansas City or whatever, but. I, I felt so dry. I was like I'm drinking water the whole time, and like sometimes my whistle, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> oops, <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could imagine that'd be hard. I, I barely know how yeah. to whistle, so I think that's a really yeah. cool power and a good thing to add to songs too. Um, speaking of songs, I wanted to know. I don't want to ask what your influences are because I, I you've, you've told this a few times, but what were those first albums that your mom or dad put on that really c- connected you with music and thought, mm. you know, this is something special in my life? Yeah. Well, my dad's funny you should say was like a Johnny Cash fan for mm-hmm. sure. Um, my mom was more of a like a, a Luciano Pavarotti and Maria Callas and uh, Julie Andrews and uh, you know wow. uh, yeah. Um, and then uh, I had a brother that was like you know a Zeppelin you know kind of like fan and and you know and Beatles and then like I don't know me and my friends like kind of were just classic rock kids you know like um, we just were like all the old stuff, you know, that really kind of just spoke to me, and, and uh, you know, and then Jeff Buckley and Nirvana and stuff like that mm-hmm. was also, you know. I heard from uh, from an interview that you were into Roy Orbison as well. That I always forget. Like that's the thing. Like when you do like a bunch of interviews, you're like, ah, oh, I didn't mention that person. And then I don't. I always forget to mention Freddie Mercury. <laughs> no. I'm like, come you on. Got, you got to mention Freddie. Yeah, yeah, but Roy Orbison's a huge thing. I mean, Roy Orbison for me was a big, is a very big one because he's like, uh, he made me feel like, you know. Um, and I'm not listen. I'm not fishing for compliments. Oh, no. Like it made me feel like you could be like funky looking and be mm-hmm. like you know, hey, it's okay. <laughs> it's the emotion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, he like had this like you know he was clearly that guy clearly didn't look in the mirror and go like I should be seen. People should see me. I'm beautiful. You know. <laughs> but and he just was like, but he was legit and like authentic and mm-hmm. and just so, uh, you know, he can make you cry. You know. Yeah. And, and I think. Uh, you know, that's like a big thing for me, like uh, eliciting emotion mm-hmm. in a song, in a song, because uh, I think um, there's nothing that really affects me more than when I'm like sad or even happy, and a song just stirs my my emotional state. Mm-hmm. I I love that because. I'm a huge Roy Orbison fan too, and right. you're right. He can yeah. make you cry. And it's yeah, just like so his drama is ridiculous. You know, uh, like like you know, like running yeah, scared, running yeah. scared. Like like that song. It's not even like there's no chorus to that song. It just keeps keeps going. <laughs> you know, it's just this ongoing thing. It's like uh, I hope he, she doesn't leave me. I hope it's okay. Here he comes. He might take her away. Fuck <laughs> up. It's like I got it. Oh yeah. You know? I, I mean, it, who does that? Nobody does that. He he's he's one of he's one in a million. I mean, he's yeah. he's really and very theatrical. And I love that about your music too because. Your music is also theatrical. I can feel it. I can feel that passion when you sing. Um, you know, you write a, a lot of songs um, for other artists, and you mentioned that it's a way that you can kind of dive into their mind. You need to look into what they're feeling at the moment. But if someone was to write a song for you, what kind of events or things in your life or people in your life or feelings would you want them to hit on? Well, that's a really good question. Thank you. Now I know why you wrote your question so small because <laughs> I, I would have liked to have seen that coming. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, that's a good one. I, I don't know. You know, like it's funny. I, I learned a lot from being on the other side of it too because mm-hmm. when I, you know, my first major label deal, that's how I got into being a songwriter because I was put in a room with all these like big songwriters and mm-hmm. you're just like, and they, and they like look at you and go like, who are you? <laughs> and then try to write songs for you, you know? And uh, so, I don't know, I think I, I would want them to um, just kind of write something authentic, you know, and something that um, was uh, powerful and, and um, something with like, you know, uh, a humanitarian of sorts message, you know, that just like spoke to like the human condition and like, uh, like I like in my songs to like kind of they're on like I like to commiserate with people about something I've been through, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, again, it comes back to that feeling, right? Mm-hmm. And what yeah. you, what you're going through. Yeah. Um, what's it like having your songs? Because a lot of what, what I heard from from your music was coming from I think I heard you in a Citibank commercial one time on uh-huh. a few TV shows as well. Yeah. What's it like to have your song on something uh, part of pop culture and then maybe being taken out of context like that? I think it's cool because I think it's like. Uh, I think it's it's very telling, um, and it shows you also like even in an audience full of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Grohl has this like 
um, saying or something that I'm going to completely butcher, but the idea of it is, is that like you know to sing a song for them to sing a song to fifty thousand people or something like that, and have them sing back like that many different meanings of the song because yeah. everyone's taking it their way. Yeah. You know, like um, I had my cousin hit me about this new song that I'm doing tonight called Recovery. That's on my next record, mm -hmm. and, and um, her son just recently passed away. You know, and uh, but and the song's about like breaking up with your lover, which like she hit me this morning and I don't know how she heard it because it's not out yet, but it's like, probably she saw it on Instagram or something, but mm -hmm. but she was like, I, you know, I can't believe that song. And, and I was think, listening to it and or singing it today in Soundcheck and I was thinking, wow, like it's hitting her in another direction, I think, because of what she's like recovering from, you know, and and uh, and that's the beauty of it, you know? That's I, guess I, I feel very um, blessed and I feel also like, you know, as things build and you know, when I'm like playing these bigger and bigger shows, I just feel like a responsibility to that to um, to try to connect with someone and, and uh, help them like kind of uh, I guess I, I would hope to help them heal from something mm -hmm. but whatever you know it's not that deep wow <laughs> 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 no, that, that, but that's a beautiful thing to say because yeah. people do find their own realizations from the words that you speak. Yeah. When, you, when you're writing, what's the best place to write at? To, do you mm. write in the tour bus? Is there a certain uh, room in your it's house? It's just wherever, you know. Like I, one of the cool things about um, being like a, a hired gun songwriter yeah. is that I learned how to like kind of, it's like the cry on command kind of thing, you know. Like it's like you just learn to like go in a room. It's like it's not particularly inspiring. Like, like um, it wasn't actually. I didn't know if the song was for me. I'll tell you like a random story, but um, a song that I have tightrope on my last record. I wrote that in this, the most boring, like four walls. I mean, it was like literally like in the space we are right now. Yeah. And it was like um, me and a guy with a computer, uh, a guy from Germany, and we just were like. I couldn't wait to get out of that room. Like mm -hmm. I had the concept of tightrope, and um, you know, we, we wrote it and, and and I laid it down, and I remember getting it back, and I was like, oh, this is actually something. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, this is something for me. I thought I was like, I wasn't sure if I was writing for me or for someone else. I wasn't positive. Yeah. But I remember that session being just like brutal for me. I was like not in the mood to write and everything, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when I got it back again, I just was like, oh shit, you know. Wow. But like the room was like absolutely uninspiring and the time I, I wasn't in the mood it was like beautiful out like it always is in California which is hard <laughs> and I was just like oh, I gotta get out of here I wanna drink a beer I fuck this place and uh, you know and a song came out of it you, you just don't know that, it's where inspiration spri yeah. strikes I guess um, I know we don't have you for, t for too long so mm -hmm. I don't want to take up too much of your time you're playing here in Chicago at Chicago's Metro it's a mm -hmm. historic spot especially for us here in the Midwest yeah. um, do you have any ties to Chicago the Midwest I don't, except that I've come here on tour a bunch, and I just, like, there's something about it, like, it's got, like, this, it's like kind of like an alternate universe New York City to me, Yeah. You know? and uh, the cleaner, like, happier version, I don't know, not really, but, uh, but I <laughs> no, like I'll how, take it, we'll I like, take it. I like that it's got, like, this, like, super, like, um, not CD pass, but, you know, like, very, yeah. you know, it's like a dark, like, you know, I think about, like, um, I think about uh, what's his name, Al Capone, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, and you just like, you know, and the nightlife, and the and the and the, it's like a foodie town and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I know there's something really cool about it. I've done Lollapalooza here, and that's really fun. And, yep. Um, it's just like a, it's it's everything. It's like a very um, continental kind of like you know, a, I will cosmopolitan. I meant to say, um, city where it's just like you know, it's it's kind of like waiting its turn to like take over you know yes. at all times you know <laughs> just, it's like just if, waiting in the background it's like if New York City its older brother dies it's like ha, da, 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 da. we were always the best hey mama yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm here now yeah I'm the favorite son yeah. <laughs> exactly. well that's, that's I'm the king now yeah. Yeah. the king died I'm the king um, uh, you know, you've been, you mentioned a, a lot of great, uh, great things, and, and a lot of books came to mind, um, especially with inspiration. Are you reading anything now? I am. I'm reading um, this. I'm reading the uh, the band story by Robbie Robertson uh, cool. right now. Um, his bio about yeah. the band, the band about the band, the band. Okay. Yeah. I'm, cool. I'm reading like Last Exit to Brooklyn, which is very depressing. <laughs> and uh, I have them all on a Kindle, so I just to kind of do that. Right on. Yeah. All right. So we have some listener questions. Um, yeah. Real quick. Uh, this is from our Twitter at Soundsesh Pod. Um, it's from LP Blogspot. Huge fans oh, of yours. Oh yeah, I know. Um, they wanted to wish Anna. Anna. Hi Anna. What's up, <laughs> Wanted to wish you the best. Yeah. Uh, when was Recovery written and recorded? Because they think it's incredible. Ah, uh, that was actually. It's an older song. It's a song I've had for like um, like a, like five years. 
it was a song I wrote um, really as a songwriter with uh, Leona Lewis in mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I wrote it about my breakup at the time, mm. the one before the one, before the Lost on You one. And I kind of was writing it from her perspective because I was like kind of, you know, I knew that I, um, when I broke up with her, I was like, I want, I, you know, I need to leave her alone and let her heal a bit, you know, yeah. even though I wanted to reach out to her. And so I wrote it from her perspective and I wrote it from, uh, I remember I, <laughs> I wrote it, um, because um, I had read somewhere that Leona Lewis just broke up with someone, and then, and then I, wor- I worked later with Leona Lewis, and we wrote a song co- together called Fingerprint that she put out. But yeah. I remember saying to her, um, "Yeah, I wrote this song. I don't think you guys chose it, but uh, you know, I, I figured you know you just went through a breakup and it was really terrible." And she's like, "No, actually, it was fine. You know, we're friends at school." I was like, "Right, <laughs> okay." You know, then I just like, <laughs> "Yeah," and I wasn't really doing the artist thing quite yet, mm-hmm. so um, I was like. I would like kind of put it aside mm-hmm. for a minute, you know. Um, and I think I remember the A and R guy that I, I actually work with him now at RCA a bit, and he was pitching songs for me as a songwriter. Mm-hmm. But he was like, uh, he's like, yeah, every time I play that song for someone like a big person or whatever, there was like, why doesn't she just do it, yeah. kind of thing. And then I was like, I don't know. I've always been really attached to it, and I think it's just been waiting for me mm-hmm. to like get to the point. I think after kind of setting my thing up with like lost on you the record and like I think it just fits me so much it always has but I, I think the setup for me now to put it out as an artist um, is really really good and I, I just like it's uh, it's definitely one of those listen to in the dark kind of songs you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. wow timing is everything I mean, timing is a- that's you don't gotta tell me that there. I get it. <laughs> I get it. All right, uh, last yeah. question. Thanks again for taking the time yeah, to speak pleasure. with us. Um, there's a lot of people who are sitting in their parents' ba- basements or yeah. the, their garages. Who? What are you doing out there? Put <laughs> <laughs> you, you your hand out of your pants. Stop it. Cut it out. You're gonna get hairy palms. Don't do it. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna Sorry, like, yes. And the, I know this is on NBC. They, they're either doing that, or they're playing their guitar or drum. What are you playing? Right down there? Cut it out. It doesn't sound like a guitar down there. Get off the dog. Anyway. Um, so, what kind of advice can you give those musicians who are trying to, you know, make it in the industry, or at least just get out there and play an open mic for the first time? What would you? What kind of advice can you give them? I mean, first of all, they just have to. You just have to do it. You have to like. I, I, and when I say do it, I mean write songs. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like um, for me. I, everybody's different, you know, like that's the thing, like I, I'm always hesitant to like give someone advice really because we're all so different and everybody's career happens so differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel like there's never any harm for anybody to just continuously write songs because uh, like like recovery, like we are just talking about like, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I was already like 50 songs past Lost On You when Lost On You started to move in mm-hmm. Europe, you know, so, and, and I was dropped from my label for that song. Yeah. I played that song yeah. for Warner Brothers and they were like, that's great. <laughs> later so you know and then it went on to do all these things for me yeah, and Muddy Waters too like mm-hmm. that got synced all these times and so I just think like continuously writing songs and not putting a lot of pressure on them like mm-hmm. like um, I think one of the things you do uh, when you're um, an earlier songwriter is like you write a song and you know it's good or you think it's good and you're like this is the one mm-hmm. no this is the one mm-hmm. and then you kind of like you, your, your brain and your like kind of like uh, drive goes a little bit like you know you just you're in the hot tub already you know yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. and then but if you don't do that if you continuously write songs i think that it um it, it takes the pressure off any song making it for you and you're already on to the next thing mm-hmm. and i think that songs are uh builders as well like i could feel i can tell you some songs that built up to other songs for me yeah and uh and i also think that um it became a a way of um truly finding myself as an artist like what was right for me and and where like my tendencies to go were and 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 even like just trying to do something off the beaten path for a change you know and I just think that you know um trying to be as prolific as possible is my advice to any songwriter any any singer because it always comes down to songs there's no um whether you write it or, or someone else writes it um it, it's like it's it's those songs that get you somewhere and I think um if you have a hit, everybody wants you to have another hit. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a hit, everybody wishes you would have a hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the only way to do that is to keep writing songs, and that's that's my advice. That's great advice. Hey. You got to keep keep yeah. on trucking. That's there you go. Thank you again for joining us here on Sound Thank Sessions. You. you can see her tonight at Metro Chicago uh, LP. Thanks again. Thank you.
Can't get enough of Sound Sessions? Like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter at Sound Sesh Pod, and check us out on Instagram at Sound Sessions WGN.